My name is what? My name is who? My name is Chicka Chicka Dave Fontenot. Hi. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dave Fontenot, and I'm here to tell you about the craziest drug. It gives you infinite concentration, an explosion of creativity, and it allows you to do things that you never thought were possible, like stay up for 48 hours straight. Now this drug can get you an internship next summer at Snapchat, SpaceX, even Google. And the best part about it is that you and your friends can do it later today, and it's free. No, it's not what you're thinking. It's a hackathon, uh, so play the video. Um, so I want you all to do me a favor real quick and close your eyes if you've ever had an idea for an app. Now, spend a few seconds just imagining what it would be like to use, use this app, how the world would be changed. Now, what if I told you that you could build it in a weekend? That's what thousands of students are doing all across the globe every weekend at hackathons. At these events, people are coming together to turn their ideas into reality. And at its core, hackathons are really simple. You're just setting aside time to focus on just one thing. And that one thing could be a painting. It could be an original song. It can even be the most hilarious Snapchat story your friends have ever seen. Heck, I've even seen people build a table. But most commonly at hackathons, people build things with software, hardware, and artwork. And you see all these people come together in, in, in this collaborative environment. Instead of just worrying about building their own hack, instead of just worrying about their own project, you see people, especially the best developers, running around and helping a bunch of teams actually turn their idea into reality. So I'm gonna tell you about a hack that, that's actually my favorite hack of all time that combined all three of these things, software, hardware, and art. I was at a hackathon called BitCamp at the University of Maryland just a few weekends ago. And, <laughs> and at the expo, and, and the expo is pretty much this science fair at the end of a hackathon where people share their projects with each other. I'm walking around the expo and I'm checking out these hacks and I, I feel like I'm in the future. I'm playing virtual reality games, I'm trying the newest social network, and then out of the corner of my eye, all the way in the corner of the room, I see the most beautiful hack. It, it's, it's a sunset. Um, and so I, I immediately rush over there, and, and, and the girl who's building this hack, her name is Steph Cohen, and, and I go, Steph, you know, like, wh wh how, what, wh wh and, uh, <laughs> and, and she, she starts telling me the story, and, and just a, a few months before, she had gone to Colorado on a road trip with some friends, and right before she left, she was, they were looking over a mountain range, and they saw the most beautiful sunset, and, and Steph had just started coding uh, a few months before, uh, going to this hackathon, and, and BitCamp was gonna be her first hackathon, so she was spending a few weeks just thinking of ideas, thinking of ideas, thinking of ideas. The, the sunset idea just came, kept coming back in her head, but she said, no, that's really difficult. How can you build a sunset? So she said, I'm gonna do that over the summer. Um, and, then, and then she just couldn't think of like, any ideas that really caught her attention. Um, so after a while, she remembered something her friends had told her um, about hackathons, that anything is possible at a hackathon. And she said, you know what? I'm gonna try to build this hack Instead of in three months, I'm gonna to try to build it in three days this weekend. So Friday night, she gets a canvas and she pretty much just starts painting. She hadn't painted in, in so long, probably like since she was a little kid, but she starts just, just making different strokes and um, by the morning, she's finished this painting of the mountain range and she's happy with it. So then she, she goes to the store and buys LEDs and starts rigging them up, all, spends all day rigging these LEDs up under the canvas. And then it, it, it's Saturday night and she needs to start coding and actually making, making this sunset happen. And, and I, I know how to code and I have no clue how you code a sunset. Um, 
So, so she's, she's actually, even, even before figuring out how to code a sunset, she's struggling to even get the lights to react to her code. And um, a after about three hours of just being really frustrated, she slams down on the table and says, does anyone know Arduino? And the person right behind her stands up and says, yeah, I do Arduino. And, <laughs> and this person actually ends up leaving their hack and joining her team for the rest of the hackathon. And right before the expo, they, they got it working. And, and I, I can tell you, I, I wish I could show a picture. I wish I could show a video. But it wouldn't do it justice. It was just so beautiful. And you're probably saying right now, you know, Dave, like, that's cool and all, but I don't know how to code. I don't know how to paint. I don't know how to rig up LEDs. And I didn't either. Neither, neither did Steph. And, and there's this, this um, common misconception that you, you become a hacker and then you go to a hackathon, but, but it doesn't work that way. Actually, um, uh, it, it, that, that's, that's backwards. You, you go to a hackathon and, and you come out a hacker. You, you start painting and you become a painter. Um, so, so all these things you have to learn by doing. So when I went to my first hackathon, I had never built anything before. Uh, I, I didn't even have a computer, actually. I just showed up. And I was this little freshman with a fire red mohawk and an idea. And, and I walk into this hackathon, and I start sharing this idea with people. And it's actually not even a tech idea at all. I just need a website to like, sell this, this product that I'm making. So most people just kind of, you know, like, oh, that's like cool, cool, whatever. But they want to work on tech ideas. And actually, the best developer in the room, um, John Beals, uh, he, he says, oh, you know, I, I like that idea. I want to I wanna work, work with you. Um, so we spend the whole weekend working together. And at the end of the weekend, we have this website that's like super simple. But like, but like I built it. It was like so cool. And I can send a link to my mom it, it, back in Florida. And, and she can go on the internet and she could use this website. It didn't do anything. But like she could use it. It was awesome. <laughs> and, uh, and I mean, as you can tell, after this first hackathon, I was addicted. I, me and my friends, um, we, were, we started going to hackathons like every other weekend. And, and back then, this was just a few years ago, um, hackathons weren't that popular. So we were having to travel just about every other weekend um, to go to one of these events. Um, so after going to about a dozen hackathons, we, we landed at um, the first what I consider mega hackathon. It was, it was called PenApps at the University of Pennsylvania. And, and actually, yeah, this, uh, this hackathon was so crazy. There were 300 people there. And the energy at this event what was insane. Everyone was helping each other out. Um, people, it, it almost like instead of people just sitting on computers, it was like people running around with computers. Um, it, it, was, it was crazy. And when we got back to Michigan, uh, we were just so blown away that we said, we have to bring this back to Michigan. We have to. So three months later, we started mHacks. Um, and with 521 hackers, it was the largest hackathon in the world at the time. We really wanted to open this hackathon up to, to people who, who didn't get to be, who, who had never been exposed to a hackathon. Um, so we had students from over 50 schools attend. And the hackathon was great. But what was even more important wasn't what happened at the hackathon. It, it's that the hacking didn't stop on Sunday. It was, it was almost like it just started on Monday. This, we had a Facebook group. And all these people who had met at this hackathon, they just kept hacking. They went back to their schools. And they started, instead of starting like a, a big hackathon event, they started hack nights, where it just started like just uh, one person who had come to the hackathon and their group of friends, they're like, oh, let's, let's build stuff together on Thursday night. And all these schools then start, started their own hackathons. And you know, I just couldn't believe this, this community that was, that was rising up out of this. This was something that lived on past a weekend. This community of people who were not just dreaming of ideas, not just talking about them, not just writing them down, they were actually building them. And, and, and all these people, they didn't know how to build it before they built it. They, they, they were Googling, they were, they were just figuring it out, and nothing was going to stop them. So I dropped out of school um, to actually spread these hackathons full time. And I spent about 17 months traveling to over 40 different colleges, and Airbnb and couch surfing everywhere, um, just, just spreading this, this hackathon movement. Um, and, and, and real quick, I just, I just want you all Look, look at the person to your right. Now look at the person to your left. These are the types of people that you see at hackathons now. Yeah. So I, I drop out. I'm running around. We're spreading these hackathons. We're getting all these people to, to go to them. And, and, and the big thing I realize is that these hackathons are almost like a gym for your mind. I know that sounds really weird, but um, uh, you know I'm a really small guy, as you can tell. Uh, so, and, and I never really go to the gym. 
because I don't feel like I belong there, you know? But if I never go to the gym, I'm never gonna get big, right? Um, so, so hackathons are the same way. Um, if, you, if you wanna build an app, there's no like, just like becoming an app developer. You, the only way to do these things uh, is by actually just doing them, just throwing yourself in there, by saying like, hey, I'm not qualified, but I'm just gonna dive in. I'm just gonna dive in. And, and 10 to 15 years ago, building an app was difficult. Um, for one, you didn't have hackathons. Um, but two, it was just actually 10, 15 years ago, I don't think the iPhone existed. So that would, that would complicate things. Um, and, and, and what it really made me realize is that um, you know, there's, there's no painter who was born knowing how to paint. Mark Zuckerberg, he wasn't born knowing how to code. All these people just, just learned by doing. And, and, and you might not believe me that, that, you can, that you can do this too, but last year, 50,000 students attended hackathons and 25,000 of them had never built something before. This is, this is insane. Just to, just to give you some, some sense of the scale, there are fewer than 20,000 CS grads every year. So over the next four years, this is a, a prediction, these hackathons are gonna produce more tech talent than every CS program in the US combined. You go off to college, there's most likely gonna be a hackathon at your college. But even if there isn't, you can, you can just start one. And it doesn't take the largest stadium in the US. It doesn't take 1,200 people. It can just start with you and some friends saying, you know what, we're, we're so excited about an idea that we want to set aside some time and, and, and actually create this, this thing. So this, this brings me to a quote that my friend uh, Mackenzie told me just the other day, like two days ago. Um, she, she told me that you know, a, lot of, a lot of people, we, we were talking about this talk, and she said, you know, a lot of people tell young people, like, be passionate. But, but what does being passionate mean? Actually, when, when someone tells you to get passionate, what they really mean is get obsessed. Get, get obsessed with a sunrise or a sunset, or, or an instrument, or like a ukulele, or freestyle rap, it doesn't matter what it is. Just, just be so obsessed with something to the point that nothing is gonna stop you. That you're gonna Google and you're gonna figure it out. That you're just gonna start doing it. That you're gonna dive in. So, I challenge each and every one of you, set aside a weekend, come up with an idea you're obsessed with, invite your friends, and create something awesome. Thank you. <laughs>